Hello everyone, welcome back. I'm Rohan, and now watching to kill that gas. So today we have another special guest from uh, Australia. His name is Will Parker. Hello, Will Parker. Hi, Rohan. Right. Thank you. Yeah, good. So, so how says the situation there? Uh, it's good. Yeah, things are going back to normal over here. Um, still work from home. Um, yeah, it's good. Okay, nice. So maybe you can introduce just first about yourself. Yeah, sure. Uh, so I'm a software engineer. Uh, I've been a software engineer for about 12 years. I started coding when I was about 11. Um, it just got the bug, I guess. I love the idea of creating new things and building stuff. Um, so yeah, learned, taught myself the full stack, uh, both back end, front end, and sort of DevOps and stuff. Um, yeah. Okay, nice. Yeah, I saw Will is enthusiast about JavaScript and Twitter. So I asked him to uh, interview on the Kodefkas. So how, how how did you find your way in programming? I mean, what about, about the background? Yeah. Um, so yeah, growing up, I always had a big interest in computers, um, mm -hmm. mainly just playing games and stuff when I was younger. Um, but then sort of age 11 or something, um, started, we did like a lesson in IT where we built a basic website. I was like, oh, actually, this is pretty cool. You know, I can build, you know, whatever I want with this. Um, and then from there, it was just learning, you know, how can I build this certain thing and this certain thing and developing my knowledge to build, you know, now major complicated like that. Um, so, yeah, always learning, but it's exciting. So, uh, yeah, nice, nice. And how about the, I mean, what's you, what's keeping you busy this day? Um, so I'm doing a lot of freelance work at the moment. So I'm building a um, Sunday league rugby competition manager for a small startup. Um, so that's been keeping me pretty busy, but also working on a side project, uh, which is a full stack application for managing your personal finances that so sort of mm. keeps track of your income your expenses and helps you budget your money um, so I'm sort of tinkering around with that on the side as well at the moment just a way to learn new languages and frameworks really and I saw you on the Twitter you also built uh currently building the your own uh, startup yeah, so I, I always have at least one side project that I'm working on. Um, <laughs> so I think the one in my Twitter bio is currently Campaignly, which is the last one I launched. Um, but I probably won't go any further with that. I decided it wasn't really a viable product. Um, so yeah, I've switched over to this Money Me application that I'm working on now. Uh -huh. So uh, how's the... Uh, you know the Peter Parker from Spider Man. What's your relation? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's <is> my brother. <laughs> Brings you around the city sometimes. <laughs> so are you are you orig original from the Australia? Uh, no, I'm not actually. Uh, so I've been in Australia about five years. Um, I'm originally from the UK. Uh, so grew up in a town oh, yeah. called Red. Just outside Birmingham. <laughs> yeah, I haven't quite lost it yet. <laughs> so, uh, what's your first programming language that you learned back yeah. then? Uh, so, obviously, I started with HTML, CSS. Some people don't class those as languages, but I still <laughs> kind of do. You still have to learn the syntax, right? Uh, and then from there, it was PHP I started with. Um, so just, you know, vanilla PHP to start with, then went mm -hmm. on to use some frameworks mm -hmm. or Code Igniter, um, what are the other ones, you know, yeah, Code Igniter, 
Cake PHP, you know, some of the early PHP frameworks. Um, as they sort of fell out of fashion, moved over to uh, Laravel. Really like Laravel. It's a really sort of battery all included framework, but it's really quite powerful in what you can achieve with it in a short amount of time. Um, so Laravel was, you know, really fun framework to work with. Uh, now I moved over to JavaScript, TypeScript, sort of in languages uh, the last couple of years. Um, so using React, um, Angular, Vue, uh, as well as things like Alpine. Uh, and then on the back end, you know, uh, NestJS, uh, Express, those sort of things. So I mainly work in JavaScript type good now, but sometimes I do go back and use some PHP just because some things are just easier. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I think the, this day all about JavaScript, all the of JavaScript. And yeah, there's definitely some advantages for JavaScript. Like you get to yeah. use it on the front end and the back end, whereas you know PHP is only on the back end. You've still got to write your JavaScript on the front end if you want that interactivity. So yeah. having it exactly. in both places means you can share a lot of code a lot of the time. Um, should definitely a benefit to JavaScript. <laughs> so, uh, what's your source to learn? I mean, people, when, if people didn't want to, didn't know how to code and want to learn, what's your best source to? Um, I'd probably recommend YouTube. There's a lot of great content producers out there who do like full series. Yeah. Um, so, you get started learning the basic sort of JavaScript building blocks. So, you know, learn arrays, learn all the different data structures you've got, um, then start building some basic functions. You can practice some of those with leak code or those sorts of sites. Um, and then from there, just watch your tutorial, build the project they're talking about, or have a go at then, once you've built the project that they demoed in the tutorial, try and have a go at building your own similar project, but with a different sort of scope. I think that, that's basically how I've learned. I've always had some sort of side project I've worked on. And um, yeah, I think it helps you develop your skills so much faster, purely because you're taking that knowledge and applying it to a different sort of use case. And just by that knowledge transfer, um, you can definitely cement those skills. Yeah, exactly. Learn the basic and fundamental is really important. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I think, yeah, people are very lucky these days that there is so much resources out there. Like when I was learning, you know, you might be the first one who ever came across a certain error or, you yeah. know, stuck over the flow was still in its infancy. Um, and there weren't as many developers out there willing to support you. Whereas there's a lot of support these days. Um, and I think that's really great. It's great for the people coming up. So talk, uh, you already mentioned the JavaScript. Let's talk about JavaScript for a bit. Yeah, sure. Uh, in my opinions, I'm also uh, front end. I'm using mm -hmm. JavaScript. I think JavaScript is the perfect, the best language. For mm -hmm. now, it's my perspective. Yeah, in my opinion. So, well, what's your opinion? Um, I mean, JavaScript. I wouldn't say it's perfect. It's still, you know, a twenty-year-old language that could be improved. Uh, yeah. Um, things like TypeScript built on top of JavaScript can help mitigate some of those mm -hmm. things that are a bit quirky about JavaScript. So having that type safety is definitely better, beneficial. Um, but you can also use JavaScript without TypeScript. I mean, it depends <laughs> on how complicated your application is. And if you're just beginning, maybe don't bother learning TypeScript yet. Um, but yeah, I think, yeah, I think overall it's a good framework. It's come a long way uh, and it's continually improving, which is nice. Um, so yeah, it'll be interesting to see where it goes in the next five, ten years. Yeah. So uh, what do you think about the web assemble that will replace JavaScript? I've not really used it much. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I mean, I'm at the age now where I really don't want to go and pick up a whole new framework, so <laughs> a whole new language. Yeah. So I'm kind of hoping JavaScript doesn't die too soon. Um, but at the same time, learning's fun in its own way. Um, and if it's more powerful and you can do things with less code, I'm all for that. So yeah, let's see, let's see, what, see what happens. Yes, I agree with you. So are you then right now fully working with JavaScript? 
yeah yeah so i work for a, a scale up called smokeboard in australia uh only just joined there actually a couple of months ago um but yeah so we use uh we've got some angular one in there uh then react um well, and the back end is all express uh and they have a .NET back end as well but i don't touch that but yeah all javascript these days yeah pretty nice So do you have like uh, advice or words for developer out there? So for people trying to get into the industry, you mean? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think make sure you're doing it for the right reasons, I guess, is probably the first thing. Like I was yeah. teaching for generally assembly for a little while and you could tell the ones who really had drive and passion, like they just wanted to learn how to build things or like they were really excited by that side of it. Whereas some people come into it, they see all these people on Twitter like, oh, I can make 200K, you can do it in six mm -hmm. months and that sort of thing. And realistically, to get to that senior level or that, you know, it, it takes a long time and you have to really be passionate and want to learn and enjoy coding um, to be able to get to that point. Um, so if you just want to do it for the money, maybe there's other easier ways to do it. Um, if you want to, if you enjoy building websites, you like that logical thought process of like coding or you like the designing side, whichever side you fall, um, then yeah, it's a great industry to get into. Um, it's definitely got more competitive over the last, you know, five years. Junior developers are, you know, they might get 200 candidates per job. Um, so you've really got to fight for that first placement. Um, but once you've been in the industry for a while, um, it's, yeah, it's really good. Yeah, exactly. Passion is number one. Yeah, exactly. You're you're going to be spending a lot of time learning, and you'll always be learning. I don't think. Yeah. You know, JavaScript and, and, is always and, changing. And, the framework's always changing. <laughs> you, can't, you can't just think, "Oh, I've learned it now," because yeah, you, you definitely haven't. I've been doing it for twelve years, and I'm always learning. <laughs> <laughs> so what what do you do in the free time? Um, a lot of coding. Um, when I'm not coding. <laughs> Uh, you know, a bit of sport, go to the gym. Uh, we played badminton. Um, yeah, travel quite a bit. Um, yeah. Luckily, can afford that, and the borders are open again now, so that's quite nice. Um, but yeah, generally a lot of coding. <laughs> I'm either at my computer or in front of the TV. <laughs> uh, so back to the your journey became developer what is exactly your first uh program that you create or you built oh first program i built um <laughs> okay i mean the first commercial project i worked on was when i was at university um so yeah. i went to uni and did a business degree but it was like part business and part web-based system um so there's a slight overlap in tech but I wanted to do the business side because that's sort of where I saw my dad going, starting my own company. And then I found that, you know, being a developer pays so much more than I'd ever get being in business. So <laughs> I've kind of stuck to the coding thing. But I'd like to run my software as a service company at some point. Um, so my, yeah, my first project. Um, in the early days, it was just like a portfolio site, um uh, little things i wanted to build so i think i built a cv generator so you put in all your experience and you sort of tagged it you know like this is a leadership quote and this is you know different things and then you could generate a cv based off whatever the job spec was um but I, yeah i never really finished any of my projects <laughs> i have like 50 domains of unfinished projects um, especially in the early days, I'd start something, I'd be like, oh, this is too difficult, and I'd get frustrated and give up. Um, but yeah, there was a lot of just learning, you know, I want to learn PHP, I want to do this thing in PHP, or I want to learn my SQL. Um, so lot, lots of just, you know, tutorial things. Um, those are probably my first major projects. Yes, exactly. So how, how did you collaborate with other teams in the in the 
in the back end because there's I mean the git popular this day what did you use um so back when I started I didn't use any version control at all um there was version control around um like svn I think it was called git wasn't really a thing back when mm -hmm. I started um and I was pretty late to it like mm -hmm. I was just self-taught so I hadn't got that sort of yeah, I no one no one had told me to use Git until I was probably about <laughs> twenty years old, and then I was like, "Oh, this is awesome!" Like it took a while to learn, but once I'd learned it, I was like, "Oh, this makes so much sense." You know, I can just do stuff, revert stuff, commit stuff. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think learning Git early on is definitely a great thing to do because once you know it and understand it, you can basically try stuff out, undo stuff. It's like having yeah redo and undo but like on steroids <laughs> <laughs> exactly so what's your uh next hopes or achievement that you want to pursue yeah. um so in the tech space i definitely like to have a go at launching my own software as a service company um i tend to have a like think up these really big schemes where I'm like, oh, this could be a really amazing product and I end up, you know, rebuilding Facebook or something and just burn out way before I finish anything. So my next goal is to find a really small problem, like a single feature that I can add um, and then build a software as a service platform around that single feature. I think hopefully that will stop me, you know, scope creeping into these huge, <laughs> huge projects I normally start and then never complete. That's probably my next goal. Oh, nice. How about the contribute to the community? Like, community. So I've used Kubernetes for quite a while. So you said sorry? Kub yeah, go what ahead. What was the question? So, uh, what was about the community? Contribute to the community? Ah, I can the community. Sorry, misheard. I thought you said Kubernetes. <laughs> uh, um, so I do a lot with um, junior developers. So I've been a teacher at General Assembly. Uh, I did a six month yeah. part time immersive course for them. Um, so I'm still in touch with a lot of my students from that. Uh, and I jump on Zooms, you know, give them mock interviews and that sort of thing. Um, we had a really good success rate, actually. Um, we had about, I think, 90% of my students now have got jobs. It was only two out of maybe 17 left um so yeah um just support those last couple to get their jobs um and then it, yeah i might teach another course um it's quite rewarding um and it's you know it's good to give back and help people out so yeah definitely something i'd like to do again yeah exactly so are you uh, i see you writing the blog <laughs> yeah so i have a blog i think it has one blog post um i i just never find the time i like i always want to be a person who writes blog posts like when i find a bug <laughs> write a thing for it but i don't know i it's it's i'm not a great writer i don't write engaging content um yeah so i struggle like when you get a bug that no one else has ever had you're like oh i wish someone had wrote a blog post about this <laughs> So I should definitely write more, especially like bug write-ups and that sort of thing. You know, here's the bug I had, here's how I fixed it, that sort of thing. But yeah, I just never find the time. Um, it's something I'd like to do more of. Yeah, I agree. So uh, what do you think about the developers that has to be active in community? you know, in, in the social media or not? Um, I think it's definitely good to network with other developers, whether that's through digital platforms like Twitter or, you know, YouTube, or whether you're networking locally. So like at regular meetups in your local area, especially as a junior developer, that can be really valuable. Um, like when you're job hunting, if you go and, you know, hang out with some other developers at these meetups, you can find, you know, what companies are hiring, what what companies hire juniors, 
Um, you don't necessarily have to wait for a job to be posted. You can just, you know, hey, get chatting to a CEO somewhere and, you know, get a job that way. Sometimes that can be way more beneficial than, you know, just applying to hundreds of job listings. So there's definitely some value in being active in the community. Um, I think a lot of tech Twitter at the moment is AI bots and it's not very valuable content. Um, mm. So I'm very cautious in who I follow on tech Twitter purely because there's a lot of useless content out there. Um, <laughs> no, seven seven websites you should use and it's just like, nah, I'm all right. Or like the tips that are actually terrible coding advice. So you've got to be careful where you get your advice from. Um, but yeah, I think networking in person is really good. Um, and I do attend quite a lot of meetup.com events in my local area. Yeah, exactly. For the networking is good. So, okay. Uh, back to JavaScript. What do you think uh, JavaScript in the future? Um, I don't know. It's tough to say. I mean, how far in the future? <laughs> <laughs> I think short term, we're going to be very similar to how we are. You know, three main frameworks. Mm. You've got React, yeah. Angular, and Vue. Um, I don't see that changing too much anytime soon. There's always new stuff coming out. Um, and I think there's a lot of, oh, that's a great feature. I'm going to add it to my framework. Like, you know, there's been a, that thing on Twitter this week with the Astro and Next having an argument or something on Twitter, yeah. where like, one of them accused the other one of stealing their features. And I think we need to get over that and think we're all trying to make JavaScript ecosystem better. It doesn't matter if you did something good and someone stole that idea. It's all about improving it as a whole for the community. So I'd like to see the JavaScript community come together more and build out like, I don't know if you ever work with Laravel, but it's like a very batteries included framework. It has, you know, notifications and or and, you know, uh, events and like literally everything you could possibly need already built into it. Um, I'd like to see something like that come out for JavaScript. Um, I think Next.js is pretty good. Um, Nest.js on the back end, they're both pretty good frameworks, but they're still missing a lot of those things that you get for free with frameworks like Laravel. Um, so I'd like to see a really comprehensive, even if it was like lots of different third party plugins all bundled into something like Laravel, um, I think that would be a good direction for JavaScript to go in. Um, it definitely helps when you're trying to build like a software or service company, you just want to quickly scaffold, you know, a website with more dependency and auth and, you know, some mm -hmm. fundamental features that lots of apps need. I'd like to see more more time put into developing those sort of sort of boilerplates. Yeah, I, I, I use Next.js currently, my project. So I'm kind of, I'm quite happy, quite comfortable with that framework. Yeah, yeah, Next.js is great. Um, they've come a long way. Um, and there's a lot of you know, like there's a next door framework, I think it might be third party, not first party, but it's, you know, it basically enables you to do social auth and everything straight into next. Um, so it's definitely going in that direction. Um, and I'd definitely like to see more, more in that space. Yeah. So maybe we can do another session or a topic about the coding session, maybe? Yeah, yeah, I'd be happy to do a coding session. Um, yeah, maybe I could demonstrate some of the languages and tools that I really like to use. Uh, so I've been using NX in my side project, which is like a, a similar to Learner, like a uh, build pipeline build system. Um, we can do T TRPC, that's pretty hot at the moment, uh, and then you have a typed API for the front end back end, so you can share those types across both. Which is really nice. Uh, what else am I using in my side project? Yeah, we, we could do something. Sure. Um, yeah, I'll be keen to do that. Okay, great. So time flies. 
Thank you so much, Will, for coming. Thanks for chatting me, Rayhan. Nice to meet you. Good night. Good night. Bye. Bye.